So with the recent announcement of the death of Jezebel, a lot of people are thinking that Kotaku isn't far behind, and with articles like this, they absolutely are. Dear Video Game Industry, please name a woman. Persona 5 Tactitia tries to make up for the series homophobia. This one, Dear Video Game Industry, please name a woman. Why was this year so frustratingly regressive when it came to representation in games? Because games aren't about representation. Games are about games, playing, having a fun fictional story with no real-world political implications one way or another unless the developers decide to go that route, in which case they won't be successful. They open up by saying, It's nearly a decade since Gamergate, the misogynistic game industry tantrum that harassed women under the guise of demanding journalistic ethics. No, it was always about demanding journalistic ethics. It was spun into being about harassment of women by third-wave feminists who jumped in to defend the likes of Zoe Quinn, who were engaged in unethical journalism. That's what it was always about, but these people have never let that go. It was always a dec It was over a decade ago. They're still complaining about it. They've been broken by this thing. And these people are gamers, by the way. I disavow them as gamers. Men, women, whoever complains about this stuff. Because this isn't, a, this isn't gaming. These people killed gaming journalism. They, they started flooding these websites and started writing stupid articles like these to make themselves look better. These are the people who believe that women have always been oppressed in gaming, and that's just absolutely idiotic. I grew up with several women who loved gaming, including my own sisters. My nieces now play video games. Video gaming has just become more popular in general. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember, but back in the day, regardless of if you were a man or a woman, you were often mocked for playing video games. Dude, why are you sitting at home playing video games, you loser? You dummy. Why don't you go out there and do something fun and active? And then years later, gaming is a multi-billion dollar industry with several multi-millions of users. So, haha, -ha, as Nelson would say. It's absolutely ridiculous that these people are complaining that women have been gatekept out when in reality what they're really talking about is their little or older brother that wouldn't let them play games growing up. But that was just your brother being a jerk. That's not indicative of the entire experience of being a gamer. You know, I don't... I was never with people who said, you can't play because you're a woman, or you can't play because of this, or you can't play because of that. I never experienced that. But I, I will say I have heard women talk about their girlfriends who mocked them for being a gamer, or for being into comic books, or for being into whatever it is that they liked. That's just human nature, is that they're just jerks out there who don't understand other people's hobbies. That's how it's always been. We need to get over it and just enjoy our hobbies doesn't matter what these people say they these third wave feminists and woke divists give people too much power they give them way too much power they give the opinions of others way too much power and then they go around wielding terms like racism sexism homophobia for everything that they don't like every dissenting opinion against them and it's absolutely ridiculous these websites are a cesspool. Years and years ago, they used to just report on the games. They used to report on actual games news. And then Gamergate happened, and suddenly these people started being flooded by the same third-wave feminist wokeivist types who just focus in on everything but gaming and trying to make gaming about this sort of ex uh, identitarian intersectionality experience when it's not. People of all stripes already gamed before these people came into it. People of all genders already gamed before these people came into it. They're trying to retroactively make it about their cultural Marxism and their feminism. And that's not what the hobby is about. That's never what the hobby's been about, ladies and gentlemen. It's always been about playing video games, men and women alike. Honestly, there are several great girls who are gamers. Several of them. And I have no problems with them as long as they're there to do the same thing that everybody else is there to do. If they're there to just get money or cause some sort of trouble, same with the men. Why are you there? Why on earth are you there? But if they're there to just play games, to just discuss what they like and dislike about a given game, that's great. The more the merrier. It's fantastic. I've never once said, if you're a girl or you're a gamer, that you're not welcome on my channel. Quite the opposite. You're more than welcome. And I already know several. You know, it's it's fine. 
but these people are acting like women are the most oppressed group in gaming. What? And then if it's not women, it's people of color or people who aren't straight. It's always a victimhood mentality with these people, and it just drives me insane. I don't want these people in the hobby because they're ruining it for quite literally everybody who doesn't want to focus on this stuff. Whenever a woman comes and speaks out against it, she's not a real woman. Or if some other oppressed group member comes out and says, hey, I'm just trying to play video games, or I'm just trying to read comic books, I'm just trying to have a good freaking time. These people go, oh, you're not a real, insert, identitarian group here. You know? Or if you're a woman, you always get hit with the internalized misogyny, which I think is an absolute joke. It's just laughable. It's absolutely laughable. There are several examples. Two examples of women that I watch on YouTube, Vera Dark and Melanie Mack. I think they're fantastic, and they're both legit. There are a lot of women gamers who are legit. They grew up playing video games. They understand video games. They're proof that goes against this narrative about women being gatekept out of games. She even lists several women who have broken into executive roles in both gaming journalism and gaming development, and it's still not enough. Because it's a, it's a game of victimhood, ladies and gentlemen. It's a constant game of victimhood, victimizing themselves, building up a straw man, and then blaming other people. Blaming men, blaming toxic masculinity. They're just hateful, evil people. That's what they are. And they, they, ha they have nothing but these websites and their angry, angry Twitter accounts and TikToks. They have nothing at the end of the day. And those things are starting to fade away. These websites are starting to close because of trash articles like this. They're, they're on borrowed time. And they're in denial that they're on borrowed time. And then when they finally accept it, they blame everybody but themselves. They can't see outside of their angry bubble. This hobby was never for people who were this angry and this vindictive against others. This hobby is for people who want to come together and enjoy playing video games. Not about, well, we need to make it more accessible here. And we need to make this more inclusive here. And no. Gaming is already an accessible and inclusive hobby. It always has been. The only barrier of entry is your willingness and abilities. If you're not willing to learn a game, then you're not going to have fun playing that game. Every gamer has to learn how to play a new game. That's a barrier of entry for anybody. But they view that as being, as the developers being racist or sexist or homophobic or whatever. That's how they view it. But that's not the case. Gaming is a question of, are you able to develop the skills necessary to beat a video game? Gaming has to be a challenge. If it's not, then there's really no point. And what's starting to happen is they're starting to try to dumb down games so that they're more, quote-unquote, accessible. They want more accessibility options. Instead of just sucking it up and learning. They complain about Dark Souls for this reason all the time. They hate games like Dark Souls because there really aren't accessibility options. You have to learn the game's mechanics in order to make it through. But that's always been gaming. But they don't like that because, again, they don't like what gaming is. They want to make it something different. They don't want to actually enjoy gaming for what it is and what it always has been. And their excuse is, is that the developers and the gamers are trying to gatekeep out everybody else. But they're not. They're saying, all we are saying is if you want to play a video game... Learn to play a video game, and that's fine. But these people are trying to have a whole different discussion, and they're trying to upend gaming to be what they want it to be about. Again, I talked about a lot of this in my gatekeeping and gaming video. This is just absurdity. And it's amazing that these websites are still up. I can't believe these aren't already an error, error 401 or whatever the code is. That'll be a happy day when people go to click on Kotaku and there's nothing there or Polygon, or any of these other websites. Already happened to Jezebel. Hopefully the Mary Sue will follow suit. All of these identitarians trying to break into nerdy hobbies and other people's business with their own agendas. Get lost. Seriously, get lost. You've been doing this for over a decade. People are tired of you. Just leave. Either submit to what the thing is and learn to enjoy it like the rest of us, men, women, children, people of color alike, or just take a hike. Seriously. I can speak on behalf of others who are fed up with this. Get lost. You're not welcome. You're some of the only people who aren't welcome in this fear because all you care about is yourself and how you see the world and making the hobby about you and your groups. 
when it's not about you and your groups. It is what it is, and everybody can enjoy it. Stop creating. They're ironically trying to gatekeep gaming for their selective groups of people. It's ridiculous. This game, this game wasn't sensitive to this group. This game didn't best represent this. The industry isn't representative enough. It's just so childish. Some of these people are my age. They're in their 30s. Get over it and just move on. There, a lot of these people are going to pull a Frosk, where Frosk just completely flamed out, and she said, ah, that's it, I'm done with gaming, I want nothing to do with gaming, that, that whole G4 debacle, she just said, screw gaming, I'm done, she was, which showed she was never serious about it to begin with, she wanted to use it as a platform to change it into what she wanted it to be, and when she couldn't, she just threw her hands up and said, I'm done, and it proved to everybody beyond a shadow of a doubt that she was never serious about it, it was always about third wave feminism, intersectionality, all these things that gaming was never meant to be about. Gaming is gaming, and people submit to what gaming is, and they just have a good time with it. Men, women, children, people of color, people of all sorts of stripes. And it was good. Gaming pre-early 2010s was great. By the time you get into the 2010s, it starts devolving into this madness, because then Gamergate happens, and these people try to hijack the narrative of Gamergate, and then accuse everybody who recognizes what the narrative actually was of just being horrible people, and that thing goes on for several years, and then they can never get over it. Rest in peace, Kotaku. Rest in pieces, Kotaku. Old Kotaku died a long time ago. That was a great website. Same with uh, Destructoid and IGN and Game Trailers and Game Spy. And once these websites finally burn to the ground, then other websites will take their place that are better. That's just how the market works. Welcome to the free market. And I can't wait. Anyways, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Super Koopa TV. God bless. Have a good one. Peace.